East Asia. Don't lie to me, our lives would be much less exciting if it wasn't for the people, culture and traditions of this geographical region of our world. What is your favorite musician, actor or favorite not safe for work Japanese comic? We have a lot to thank these people for. I personally have spent years of my life learning Mandarin. Four years as a matter of fact, and I don't remember anything. But that's beside the point. Japanese, however, I both live and studied there. My point is, we know quite a lot about this part of the world. But in case you don't, I'm your guide. But also, the countries I picked are the first countries that popped up in my mind. So if you're Singaporean, writing a hateful comment from your high-tech Wakandan black magic keyboard why my manhood is inadequate, how did you know? And that you think that I should be sent to the worst gulag in history, which is Denmark, because I didn't include your country, it's nothing personal. This region has thousands of years worth of traditions and history, a place where each country offers experiences of a lifetime and of course, where they all hate each other. Today, Mongolia's size and landlocked status may make it vulnerable to influence from Russia and China, as well as being heavily punished simply by being a part of the Soviet Union in the past. By the way, a life hack, don't adopt communism. But historically, its power was undeniable. Sure, Mongolia now, compared to then, is like when you fight against a boss in Dark Souls, but when you unlock him as a playable character, he's just meh. However, the most confident and strongest people would have been terrified 800 years ago by Mongolia's sheer strength. Honestly, here in Mongolia throws singing and puts terror in my soul of an empire that hasn't even existed for eight, like 800 years. Still. In a weird way, I get a feeling that I want to wake up and conquer Eurasia in the name of, of the Great Khan. I'm Swedish. I guess it's just a part of that masculine urge to wake up and be Mongolian, riding horses with a badass hawk on your arm, throat singing into the sunset while creating the largest continuous empire this world has ever seen. Trust me, I could talk about Mongolia for hours, but let's continue south to Mao Zedong land, a language which I studied hard between the ages, okay no one cares. A country I visited as a part of an exchange pro- uh, no one cares. The country with the weakest soft power, at least out of East Asia. Of course, I'm talking about mainland Taiwan. Oh my god, uh, I didn't mean- oh, oh, come on. Oh. Beijing. Yo what is up guys, I got the CCP after me, but now we're gonna talk about Japan. We all know about the positives about Japan, we've all read the Japanese manhwas and seen the most underground series like Naruto and One Piece. We've all imagined ourselves being reborn as a cute Japanese girl living in an anime. Again, it's just part of that masculine urge to do just that. I have a lot of memories that I hold dear of Japan, but one thing that traumatized me was the toilets. No, I don't talk about the stream that goes up your stinky dinky smoothie doofy and being uncomfortable by that. I talk about the buttons. Accidentally turning on a stream stronger than a high pressure water yet and it goes straight at you when you're at the restaurant. Brada, in that moment, I unlocked, <laughs> bro, in that moment, I unlocked control over every muscle, every fiber and became an elite acrobat. I performed insane acrobatics just avoiding that stream of water like my life depended on it. It's just a heads up, a friendly heads up by your favorite YouTuber affiliate. Last but not least, the Koreas. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't know that much about the Koreas. But strap on, it is a horrible thing about North Korea. I know, I'm not talking about the numerous violations of human rights and North Korea being a dictatorship, that's obvious. I'm obviously talking about the biggest theft in history. 
damn damn North Koreans stole 73 million dollars from Sweden. They were like, hey yo, Sweden, can we get like a thousand Volvos? And Sweden was like, yeah, trying to be neutral and all back in the days. They were like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, but you're gonna pay it back, right? Right? This is a warning, North Korea. Give us back our Volvos or else I'm going to send you a passive aggressive message. Swedish style. Yeah. Fellas, we're so close to hitting 100 subs. Until next time. Bye bye. Hey, do.